I'm only gonna give myself like 10 minutes at this Goodwill. We're gonna see if we can find five items to buy so that I can take you through the process of buying, photographing, listing, and selling. Let's go. I found two pairs of shoes to put into my cart and as you can see I look at every single pair of shoes on the rack just because one my Goodwill doesn't even have that many shoes but I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything so this sequence is me passing over a lot of shoes because they just don't fit my criteria they're not a good brand or they're not in good condition like these sneakers here or you know these are lucky brands and the style is pretty good the brand is good but the price is not um, maybe these pink shoes that you see to the left I should have picked up given the Barbie movie and its immense popularity um, but as you can see on an entire rack I only find about two pairs of shoes that are going to work for me to resell this pair of Cole Hans, I was devastated that they were just priced so high because I probably would have gotten them given that they're calf hair and I really like the style but they just were not worth the amount that Goodwill was asking for them This pair of Stuart Weitzman's I kind of debated on for a little bit. Um, the condition isn't perfect, but the price was really good. And so ultimately I ended up getting them even though the size is seven and a half quadruple A, which means they are so, so, so narrow. And you're gonna see the shoes that I did end up picking up in the haul that's coming up next. This is another section of their boutique items. So you'll see some pretty decent brands, but you're gonna see some pretty astronomical prices as well. These fry boots check all the boxes, so you will be seeing them later in the haul. However, some of these other shoes that are up here uh, may not pass the test. These shoots ones I do end up putting in my cart as well because they're so stinking cool. Again, you will see them very soon. These Picolinos, I love the brand. The style was actually pretty cool. I just could not justify the amount that they were asking for them, especially given the small amount of wear that I was seeing on the side, so I did have to put them back. Right here you're going to see me find another pair of fry boots. You can see the logo on the back and they're priced really well at $9.99 and I do end up putting them in my cart. However, I do look them over more closely um, off camera and I kind of suspect that they're not real fries. It doesn't say fries anywhere on the inside and I think Goodwill knew it too which is why they priced it so low. Okay, I spent a little bit more than 10 minutes in there. I spent maybe like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I came out with mainly shoes because they are the easiest thing to find, I feel like. And so I found five pairs of shoes to resell as well as three pairs of shoes for my mom to try on, mainly like Vionic. I think I got a pair of Clark's Cloud Stepper shoes. Um, but depending on, you know, if she likes them or not, if they fit her, um, I might resell those too. But this video is really about you know, just listing five items. How long does it take? How long does it take to sell those five items? All that good stuff. So I will see you when I'm photographing. Let's do a quick haul of the five pairs of shoes that I picked up for this little tutorial on how to list, I guess we'll call it list five pairs of shoes now since that's all I got at Goodwill today. But the first pair of shoes that I got was this pair of shoes by the brand 
Reeker. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's Reeker. I'm not 100% sure. This is a brand made, I believe, in England, and they are a comfort brand. So I picked them up for $9.99 at Goodwill. I'm trying to take off the tag so I can look up a little bit more information on them. It doesn't say much in here. It's kind of faint and like hard to see what the um, writing on the inside sole says. It does have like a removable sole. Um, and oh, I think it has like the style name. So I think this is called the Celia. So I took out the sole. There's, you know, some words and stuff in there. I think this is the Celia. Um, there's kind of like a little chunk missing underneath the insole, which is not ideal. I'll have to just close that. I did not see that. This is in a European size 39, and it's got this little design on the front, as you can see. Yeah, it's embroidered, which is really interesting. It's a leather upper. It's got this little, like, ankle strap here, but it's not, you know, there's no Velcro or anything like that. So I just thought these were kind of unique. Um, like I said, I picked them up for $10 at Goodwill, and I think that I should be able to sell them for hopefully at least $40. Let's remove this insole, too, and see if there's anything funky under here. Okay, there's also like a little um, piece kind of gouged out of this one too. So I wonder if that's just like, like how is it that they have identical little marks like that? Let's see. Yeah, they're like almost identical. So maybe that's just part of the shoe. I don't know. Anyway, other than that, they're in really, really good condition, which is why I got them. You can see like on the treads, they're in really, really great condition. So hopefully, what did I say, like 40 on those. Next up, we have this pair of Echo shoes. Um, if you've watched my channel, you know that Echo is so hit or miss for me. Like sometimes it does really well, sometimes they sit on it forever. These they had priced at $16.99. However, the white tag shoes were 50% off. So I got these for, it looks like $9.27 um, once you factor in tax. Otherwise they would have been $8.50, um, which I think is a pretty good deal. I did not look up comps or anything for these yet. You're going to see me do that um, here soon when I go to list them after I photograph them. But I got these for a few reasons. One, Gore-Tex, which is a great like third party technology. That means that it's waterproof, it's breathable. It kind of prevents these from getting really smelly when they get wet. Um, I got them because it says yak leather right there. I don't know what that means. And I got them because I think that they're new. I don't think that they have been worn. There is no wear on these whatsoever. And so I think I can list them as new without tags because they don't look like they have any wear to them. Let me see if I can find what size they are receptor light technology they are a size 10 so really excited about those i don't know how i'm going to price those but you'll see me as i run comps and do all that good stuff next up these are probably honestly going to take the longest for me to sell um but i picked them up because i cannot believe they were only asking 3.99 for these these are a pair of stuart weitzman shoes which stuart weitzman does okay they're boots they're knee-high boots do amazing. These, however, I mean, I thought they were pretty cute. I thought they were pretty modern. I like this upper here. Um, I like this ankle strap. The reason why I think they could take a while is because they're in a size seven and a half quadruple A, which means they're really friggin' narrow. And they are, they're, they're very narrow. But because, you know, they were so, 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 so cheap, um, I just thought I'd try them. I'm assuming I can list these for like, I don't know, I wanna say 35 to $40, we shall see, but I do imagine that I'll be sitting on these the longest. Next up, I I don't pick up this brand very often anymore just because I feel like I kind of have gotten burned on it in the sense that I sit on it for much longer than I would like to, but these were just in such great shape. I loved the look of them. I, I don't know, I just thought they were amazing. So the brand is Schutz, or maybe it's Schutz. I believe it's a German brand. Um, these are made in Brazil. They're a size seven and a half B, um, leather sole, and they're amazing. Like, I love this, would you call it like a croc print? I don't know, but I love just the classic stiletto heel 
with like the pointed toe. These are what I wish I could dress in. I feel like I would die within four seconds because they would be so uncomfortable, but they're beautiful. They're stunning. They're so classic. They are like a working woman's dream. I feel like, like, I just feel like you would feel so strong and intimidating in these. And I think these are new without tags as well. I think the person who bought these, you know, thought they looked amazing and then put them on and they're like, oh, so I cannot walk around in these. I will absolutely die and fall on my face. So they donated them and Goodwill priced them at $12.99, which I was like, you know what? I can do $12.99 because I think I can list these for at least 50, but I have a feeling I can list them for higher because I have a feeling that they're, you know, like a pretty decent style. So we're going to see how these do. Like I said, size seven and a half B. Um, I think, you know, using Google lens and stuff, I'll be able to figure out the style name real quick and hopefully sell these for some good money. So I thought these were a great find. Super excited about that. And then last but not least, I thought this was a great find as well. This is a pair of boots by Fry. Now you saw in the thrift with me portion of this video that I found what appear to be a fake pair of Fry's. The quality of the leather felt horrible. They had this little logo. This is the Fry logo and they had it on those boots, but it didn't say Fry anywhere on the boots. Typically it'll say it like on the bottom, it'll say it on the inside. Um, and those boots, it didn't have anything on the bottom. It didn't have anything, um, on the inside. And that's why I was like, I'm pretty sure these are fake. So I left those behind. I feel like Goodwill knew it too, cause they had them priced pretty low. Um, but these were priced at $12.99. I should be able to list these for at least 50, if not more. And these are in amazing condition. Yes. These have definitely been worn. You can see on the bottom, someone went out and about in these, but these are in otherwise amazing condition. So really excited about these. There's a little bit of wear here. You can see a little bit of scuff marks there um, and right here, there's a little bit of wear, uh, probably from like when they tried to take them off and they used this shoe to like, you know, kind of pull it off of the foot. Very excited nonetheless. And I don't have a, let me see if there's a style name in here. No style name, six and a half M, but there is a, um, style number. I'll type that in and plus Google Lens will probably help me pop these up really quickly. So you probably noticed like five very different styles of shoes, which I'm very excited about. Pretty sure the Echo shoes are for men. So even a variety as far as like, you know, who the shoes are intended for. And I'm going to just list them on my platforms. Now I do have a pretty big audience on my platforms because of the fact that I've been on them for a long time. And yes, like, you know, every once in a while, I do think people who watch my channel uh, we'll go over to my Poshmark closet or my eBay store to see what I have, but I'm going to just list them without telling anyone that I'm listing them and try to see given regular traffic, how long it takes for these guys to sell. But I will also take you along for the photographing and listing portion of the process. So you can see what that's like. You can see what it's like for me to run comps, all that good stuff. And we're going to discover together how well these shoes do. So now would be a good time to hit that like button button and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, but stay tuned for the photographing portion of what it takes to sell an item online. All right. So I have these five shoes here. I have my light box, so I'm ready to photograph. All I'm going to do first is get all of like the little stickers and stuff off of the shoes. See if there are any scuffs that need to get cleaned up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start photographing all of them. It should not take me a very long time. In fact, let's time it. Ready, set, go. All right, so taking the stickers off took three minutes and 44 seconds. Um, a little bit longer than I thought they would. I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit harder on some of these shoes. But um, for the most part, as I was taking the stickers off, I was trying to notice if there was anything that needed to get cleaned. I think they're all fine. It's more I was kind of observing where I was going to have to um, take pictures of flaws and stuff. So on those um, fry boots, we had already talked about some of those flaws. One thing I noticed about the bottom of these um, Echo shoes, like underneath the insole, is that that's what it looks like. I don't think that's a problem, but I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture of it. Other than that, no flaws really. On the Stuart Weitzman's, I noticed that there are these little strips that I'm fairly certain are not 
like from Stuart Weitzman itself. I think someone put those on for added comfort. So I'll have to take pictures of that. Other than that though, I think I'm good to go as far as, you know, cleaning the shoes and all that good stuff. So now we're gonna just go ahead and take some pictures. sneakers I do like to use I forgot what these are called but you know like the kind of uh, shoe trees um, I'll show you why I always have like this little bit of stuff that I use for shoes so I've got like stuff to clean shoes with this is a little kit that came from clean kicks um, and then I have like the Doc Martens. This is the Wonder Balsam for shoes that are made of leather that just need a little bit of extra love. This is um, some Doc Martens shoe polish in black. These I just get from Ikea, these shoe trees. They do tend to break kind of easily. So I do try to have, you know, quite a few in stock. But this is my little shoe kit. But what I like to do is I go ahead and put this little shoe tree inside of sneakers and that way the sneakers are just a, a nice shape and you can see um, what they'll look like even with the foot inside and then I go ahead and tie it. These ones are not horrible, they hold their shape pretty well but you can see the difference with or without the shoe tree and that's why I like to use it. Um, this one I'm going to have to kind of relace a little bit, let's see. If your presentation of any garment, anything that you're selling, whether it's shoes, clothes, hard goods, if your presentation is a little bit nicer than someone else's, I think it just helps it stand out and hopefully sell a little bit faster. So now those look really nice and we're going to go ahead and photograph them. You'll see all of the pictures that I took later in the video when I'm editing the pictures, but as you can see, I take a ton of pictures of each shoe, including one of the height of the heel if there is one. So this is where I've been keeping my shoes. I've been putting them in bins and these bins are different from these bins in that these bins have numbers and these bins are being differentiated by letters. So if it's going in a shoe bin, I just kind of say what the letter is. And if there's like a little extra post-it on that sh particular shoe bin, it means there's room in there for more shoes. So right now I can fit shoes in H, I can fit shoes in B and in D. Also that box probably has to go because it's sitting right on top of a bin. Although I'll just go like this for now because there wasn't room in G anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and get these shoes processed, which means I'm gonna just put them into list perfectly. All right, so we are going to add these shoes into this perfectly put them away in our bins and the way that I do that first I need to get some bags for the shoes so hold on so in the same way that I reuse Ziploc bags for clothes I also reuse for shoes um, these are a little bit bigger I would say and the reason I like to put shoes in bags before I put them in the bins is so that the shoes don't mess each other up they're not like you know rubber is not rubbing up against leather that sort of thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add listing these are a pair of Reeker shoes. I also need to get my receipt so that I can remember how much I ended up paying for each pair of shoes. I cannot type. So Reeker tan embroidered slip on shoes, women's size. I think these are a 39. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh those as well. I've got my scale next to me, you can't see it, but these are 15.9 ounces. So we're gonna just go ahead and call it like, I think we have to say it's about one, pound and an ounce because once I start you know putting them in a bag and all that kind of stuff that is how much they'll end up being so um, also because they're a little bit bigger of a size I'm not even sure that these would fit in a padded flat rate envelope I feel like up to a women's eight you can for the most part comfortably fit in a padded flat rate actually these might I feel like if these go in this Ziploc bag that means that they'll fit in a padded flat rate so I think we can say that they'll go in that you guys I don't remember but later when I um, look at the footage again. I will put the cost of goods right here. Where did it go? I'll put the cost of goods right here. But what I will put in the seller notes is I'm going to write down Savoy, Goodwill, 
and I'm gonna write down the date that I got them so I can keep track in my mind um, like how long I've had these for and I'm gonna just go ahead and copy that because I'm gonna put that same information into all of these listings oh I also need to put where I'm putting these so for now let's say that the SKU I think I had space in I had a lot of space in H so I'm gonna just put all of these in H just to keep it easy so for now I'll put it on this chair next up we'll do these Stuart Weitzman heels I'm gonna get the weight again these I do specifically remember were three dollars and ninety nine cents which is why I got them so here we're gonna put Stuart Weitzman I cannot type black heels women's size 7.5 it was like quadruple a crazy okay so these cost $3.99 now with tax they cost $4.35 tax is high here guys um skew is h these are 14 ounces so once you factor in you know all the packaging and stuff we're going to say that that's 15 ounces and i'm just going to pay savoy goodwill um so i'm just like basically drafting these listings and I'm getting them started into list perfectly so that I don't forget what I got, when I got it. You know, I can put all the information regarding my cost of goods and what the SKU is, you know, where I can find the item later. And then once I get these pictures edited, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into list perfectly through my phone and I'll show you that process once we get there. Um, but that's what I love about using List Perfectly to keep all of my inventory organized. Even if I can't get to photographing stuff right away, I still have a record of what it is that I have. And um, when I get to it later, it's not super confusing. So I do need a slightly bigger bag for these Echo shoes. All right. The hope with the Echo shoes is that later when I, you know, run comps and try to figure out how to price them, um, I will be able to find the style name and I bet there's like a style number in there. So gray Gore-Tex uh, leather, eh, I'll just write suede, suede sneakers, men's size, I don't remember, but it doesn't matter because I don't have any other Echo shoes. So I'm not going to get them mixed up with anything else. These I don't remember off the top of my head how much they were, but these are one pound and 9.5 ounces, so I'm saying 110, and that's where I got them. So these are done. Move them over here. Did I write H? Yes, I did. All right, next up are the fry boots. And I'm gonna try to place these in here nicely so that they don't rub up against each other in a negative way. So here are my fry boots. Put them on the scale. I thought these were $12.99. I'm like almost positive, but I'm just gonna wait. So these were fry, tan, stacked, heel, ankle boots. Women's size, I don't remember. Doesn't matter right now. The goal of like kind of getting my listing started in this perfectly is just to move fast. Um, skew is H. They weigh one pound, 5.2 ounces, so we're gonna say 1.6. And I'm gonna just paste that. Oh, did I say H? I don't remember if I said that. Oh, I did, okay. And then last but not least, we have the shoots. Shoots, I don't know how to pronounce it. But let's put these in a baggie. These are just really amazing shoes. Like they are, okay, the lighting is awful, but so classic, I love these, okay. So put them in the bag. And see, I like try to put them in a way where they're not going to like hurt each other. Like the heels are going against the bottom of the other shoe versus like being able to stab the leather on the other shoe. So shoots black leather pointed stiletto heels, women's size, I don't know what. I don't remember how much they cost. They're gonna go in letter H. These weigh 14.3 ounces, so we're gonna say 15 ounces. Save and exit to catalog. These are all processed and ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in their bins, which you know for all of these is just gonna be bin letter H. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and run comps and get these bad boys listed after I edit the pictures. Here you're gonna get a simultaneous view of me putting shoes away into the bins in slow-mo and then a screen recording of what it is that I do on my phone once I have edited pictures a little bit. You know, this is basically how I get a clear white background. So first of all, I don't know what happened to the footage of me editing my pictures, but essentially I go through all of the pictures that I just took, I make sure that Things are bright enough and one way that I do that is using an app called PicTap Go. I use the lights on feature. The app itself is pretty cheap if I remember correctly and I literally use the lights on filter for almost every single picture. Um, and then I will also maybe increase the exposure a little bit especially on darker shoes. And once the pictures are in pretty good shape I use this app that you see on the screen here called Photo Room and this is what gives me a bright white background background for all of my pictures that I want to have a white background for, especially the cover photo. Um, it does take a little bit of time once you select all of the pictures in order to you know, get the white background, but it is super fast and simple to get a white background with the app Photo Room. I do have a video where I walk you through how to use Photo Room and how I edit my pictures that I will link right here. Um, but you know, I keep it pretty simple. I try not to put too much time into editing my pictures. And then the next step is putting those pictures into the drafted listings on List Perfectly. So now what I'm doing is I am using List Perfectly on my phone. I am pulling up the listings I have drafted and I'm simply adding the edited pictures into each listing from my phone. Once I have all of the pictures into the listings on List Perfectly, then I can move on to the next step, which is looking up comps, listing, all that kind of stuff. All right, so here are the five listings right here. We've got this pair of Reekers, Stuart Weitzman, Echo, Fry, and Shoots. And this is not part of it. This is shoes that I got another time. So let's start with these Reekers. Um, as you can see, these listings already exist. You saw me draft them into List Perfectly, and all I had to do was find them in my kind of draft bank, if you will. So the first thing I like to do, especially if a pair of shoes does not have a style name or a style number on them, which Reeker, I feel like usually does not, then I'm going to try to use Google Lens. Google Lens is a great tool, and the way that I utilize it on List Perfectly is I will just simply open up the picture in a new tab. I will right click, and I will click on Search Image with Google. That is Google Lens. And over here, it's going to pull up anything that they have found on Google that is similar to this. So right away, I see the exact pair of shoes here. This might be, this just isn't like a great picture. I see them here. So definitely on Poshmark, there's a couple listings. I'm going to go ahead and check out this one as well on eBay because I suspect that it is the absolute same shoe. So let's see. This is the listing down here. It was the exact same listing. I do think my pictures look a little bit nicer. These sold for $25 or they were listed at 25 on eBay and a best offer was accepted. So let's see this Poshmark listing, how much they have it listed for. Um, let's see, what if I click on this one? This is not the same shoe. So I don't really know what's going on with Google Lens here. Uh, let me try clicking on this one one more time. Yeah, I am not quite sure. Let's just scroll a little bit and see if we can't find. Okay, that's okay. So the main thing I was looking for through using Google Lens is, is there a style name, which I don't feel like I'm finding any. So this one, they're calling it a Reeker Slingback Loafer. Um, let's go ahead and try typing that in to Poshmark. I already forgot. Slingback. Thank you. Slingback. And I'm going to put embroidered loafers and we're going to see if that pulls anything up. So we're looking for ones that have my embroidery on them. This is similar and they are part of that anti-stress line. These they are trying to sell for 60. I'm trying to see if there are any identical. This is kind of, oh, this is men's though. So that's very different. I didn't know Reeker made men's shoes. So now that kind of tells me too, I need to specify the category, which for me is women. Here's the one that we already saw. They had it listed for 60. This is somewhat similar. They have these listed for 45. 
mm, somewhat similar, 48. So now what I'm going to do, I'm seeing listings. This one's listed for 30. I'm seeing things anywhere from like 30 to $60. I was kind of hoping for 40 or 50, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look now at sold listings. And first and foremost, we, oh, okay. So here's the one that we were looking for. This is not good because these sold for 20. This is the same thing in black. It sold for 26. This one sold for 15. So that tells me mine's probably not going to sell for much more than 2025. I think the one on eBay, remember, sold on best offer and it had been listed at 25. This is the same shoe. It sold for 26. I think we are safe listing ours let's say 35 or 40. This one sold for 30 and it was new with tags. So it looks like anti-stress or anti-stress is a very um, important keyword to incorporate. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back here. We're going to kind of uh, change this up a little bit based off of what we saw. So we want to put Reeker tan sling back embroidered Maybe I'll put anti-stress even before embroidered. Slip on shoes, women's size. And I'm going to put European 39. And then when I don't know like a company size compared to U.S. sizing, I just put U.S. shoe size guide or chart, you can say. And then it'll show you like what is a European 39 in U.S. sizing, it's a size eight. And I do look it up for each brand just because sometimes it differs just like a little bit. So I'm going to put U.S. eight. Can I fit all that? Almost. Okay. I'm just going to take out the word size here. That way they see the European size and the U.S. size. I know for me personally, I never know how to convert European sizing to American sizing in my head. So sometimes I'll even like skip over those listings because I don't want to take the time to figure it out. And that's why I just put both in the listing title if I can. So let's write our description for these. I'm going to say these tan slingback embroidered slip on loafers. Oh, and then here I didn't use the word loafers. Let's change shoes to loafers. Okay, we're still under the 80 character mark. These tan slingback embroidered slip on loafers from Reeker feature anti-stress technology and are sure to become your favorite shoes for everyday comfort, exclamation point. I don't really have much else to add. There wasn't really like a lot of damage or flaws to these from what I can remember. So what I have is a keyword shortcut, which means if I type the word shoes with an exclamation point at the end and then press the space bar, out pops these few sentences that are programmed to appear when I just do shoes exclamation point. So um, what is written is they are in excellent use condition or EUC with no holes, rips or stains, measurements are shown in the pictures. I'm gonna take out that sentence because this pair of shoes didn't require any measurements bundle with other items from my closet for the best deal. So now I'm going to put some more keywords. Um, I just like to put three keywords at the bottom of the description and you'll see why. So I'm going to put leather, I'm going to put comfort, and I'm going to put embroidered. I'm going to copy those because I'm going to paste them somewhere here in a little bit. So now I'm going to go into kind of the descriptors regarding this listing. This is by the brand Reeker. I'm going to go ahead and put tan. The material is leather. The size, I'm going to put the U.S. size, which is U.S. size 8. This is women's. It's pre-owned. It's in good pre-owned condition. This is where they have like pro description, little kind of item specifics, if you will, similar to eBay. I do like to go ahead and fill these out because List perfectly will format this information in a really nice way for your listings. And I'll show you that in a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and say solid. I'm not going to put in the season or the weather. I'm not going to put in anything for care. Do I know where these are made? Let's see if it says, I remember all of this being really faint. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't make it out from this picture. And also I don't think people care that much where something was made. Sometimes it'll say it on the bottom of the shoe, but I'm not seeing it here either. So we're gonna leave that one blank. Here is where copying the keywords that I had put at the bottom of the description come in handy because where it says keywords or tags in this part of the listing, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it so I don't have to you know, write it out again. Oh, I had said I was gonna tell you the cost of goods. Okay, I still don't have it, but I will share that information when I do the what's sold per portion of this video. Let's decide on $40 for my cost of goods. I have all the shipping already. That is ready to go. So update. 
Let's do the rest of these listings. I'm not going to talk you through each section the way that I did the others, just because we already went through one. But if there's something that stands out, I will. So this particular pair of Stuart Weitzman's, there was definitely no style number or style name. So I'm going to go ahead and use Google Lens again and hope that something comes up. And right away, I'm seeing the identical shoe. I'm seeing better prices, which is great. I see these two up here. So this one, it's saying that it's vintage and it's calling them slingback heels. This was listed for $47. Um, and I wonder what size these are. Like, okay, it doesn't say if they have like quadruple A, you know, narrow or anything like that. Let's try this one here. This one they have priced at 79. They are new without the box, so that makes sense. And these do appear to be the same exact shoe. Yeah. Yes, these are the same exact shoe made in Spain, kind of that like block heel. So this one, there's also not like a name for the shoe, but I can kind of use some of the information that they put in their listing title and use it in mine. So they used micro stretch sandals. I like that. And I bet that's coming from like the box or something. And I can also, yeah, there's not really much to use there. So we're going to say Stuart Weitzman black micro stretch block heels. I'll put the word sandals in there as well. And that's about all we can fit. So now the last thing we're going to do is see if we can pull up more comps for these to see how much I should price mine at. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the word block here. And let's see what we get. This one doesn't have the word sling back. So maybe I need to incorporate the word sling back. And that should get me better results. Okay, let's see if we find anything that's the same, ideally, or similar. So this is like 50. I'm not seeing very many like open toe ones that are similar. Okay, that one's very different. That one they have priced at $2.99. But generally speaking, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of 50. This one's 94. 50. It seems like 50 would be a safe bet. However, it is really important that we see how much Stuart Weitzman shoes have been selling for. So now let's scroll back up and we're going to go to sold items because we want to see, you know, regardless of how much we list something for, how much is it going to actually sell for? So this one is kind of similar. It doesn't have an open toe, but the look is similar. And that one is going for 30. This one sold for 50. This one sold for 78. Yeah, I'm not seeing the exact shoe, which is fine. I mean, these are slingbacks. These only went for 15. These went for eight. Okay, these people are letting go. Their shoes were way too little. It seems like I can get away with listing mine for 50. So that's what we're going to do. I also love listing things for $50 because when people are searching, when they filter by price, if you have something priced at $50, it's going to fall under the $25 to $50 filter as well as the $50 to $100 filter. So if I can get away with listing something at $50 instead of $45 or $50 instead of $55, I'm going to do it because I feel like it's going to help me out in the long run. So just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and go into the pricing part here and I'm going to put that, oop, my cost of goods is 435. My price on these is 50, not 500. So I do want to make sure that I put the word sling back in here. I'm going to sacrifice the word block because I don't think I need that. So black sling back micro stretch heels sandals yep that all fit okay these classic black sling back micro stretch heels from whitesman are the neutral open toe shoes you have been looking for they feature a block heel and a Quadruple A with perfect for those with narrower feet. Um, there is a tiny spot on the top of one of the shoes. On the exterior, as shown in the pictures, it may come out with a little work. And then I have my little keyboard shortcut. Because there was that little flaw, I'm going to make a little edit here. 
And instead of saying they are in excellent use condition with no holes, drips, or stains, I obviously just talked about kind of a stain. So I'm going to say they are in otherwise excellent use condition. And then I'm just going to get rid of this little part at the end. I did include a measurement of the heel, so I will keep that. Oh, I also have to talk about like the little strips of fabric that were um, put onto the sling bag portion of the shoe, just so they're not like, what the heck? There's a tiny spot on the top of one of the shoes on the exterior of some of the pictures and may come out with a little work. The previous owner also, I don't know if it was attached um, padding to the padding on the inside of the ankle strap for added comfort. Okay, so I feel like that gives all of the information that a prospective buyer needs to know regarding these shoes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put in some keywords. I'm going to say leather. I'm going to say minimalist and I'm going to say neutral. I think those are all really good keywords for the brand. I'm going to put Stuart Weissman. They are black. I'm going to say leather. I mean, they're made of other materials too, but there's also leather, so that's fine. Size is 7.5. They are a women's. I'm going to be honest. If I had to guess, I think that these will not sell within a month and I'm okay with that. But this is a pretty specific width, you know, someone looking for quadruple A and not only that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this will take a little bit longer to sell. That's all right. So that listing is done. Moving on to these echo shoes where'd they go okay i don't think there was a style number but there might have been like right here so there are some numbers here um i'll come back to those but first we're going to see if i can even more quickly just find these shoes without having to type in a style number and i think it's these guys right here except mine i believe are men's correct let's see i guess it doesn't say so 41 european 10 us i think that means that it is let's see so this is women's and it's called the aspina low gore-tex hiking shoe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type these into here and I'm going to look for this shoe in all categories, not just women, because I want to see if it shows up for men, for women. So these are all women's. I think they're a women's hiking shoe. Okay. So over here on Poshmark, let's see, mine were a size 10. On Poshmark, we're seeing them at a size 10 listed for 42, listed for 10, uh, 75 over here. These are size nine, they're listed for 58. Mine, however, if you remember, and if I remember correctly, let's look at the bottom. I think mine were basically new without tags, like they had not been worn. Let's see, for example, the state of these, the ones that were priced at $42. Yeah, it says like minor scuff marks on the front. Um, so these definitely have some wear to them. So now let's look and see how much these have been selling for on Poshmark. So I'm going to go to sold items. Oh, these sold for 20 here. These sold for 50. That is what I want to see. These look like they're in rough shape and they sold for 13. These sold for 65. They were new with tags. I think I'm going to go, these sold for 50. I'm going to go between the two listings that we saw in my size. So I'm going to list mine not for 75, not for 42. Let's go 60. What do you guys think? Yeah. I think I'm going to go 60 because I want to leave room for offers. My hope is that they'll sell for at least 50. Sorry, I got distracted and I want to see why I had notifications. Okay. So let's go ahead and first of all change this information so we these are the echo espina logo tex hiking shoes women's size 10 gray they already had the word gore-tex um i think i'll put something about the yak leather 
receptor light technology. I don't know if people are going to be looking for that. Gray yak leather. And maybe I'll just write outdoor. Okay, so I'm going to put this term receptor light technology. I'm going to put that in the description. These echo asmina low vortex hiking shoes are perfect for your next outdoor excursion. Excursion. They feature receptor light technology. I guess I should capitalize the R and R. Mm, yeah. and are in a neutral gray leather material. Okay, I think that's all the information I need. Now here I'm going to say they are basically new without tags with no holes, rips, or stains. Okay, so now we're going to say leather, outdoor, and we're going to say athletic. I think those are good keywords. This is Echo, they are gray, they are made of leather, they are in a size 10, they are women's, they are, we're gonna say new without the box, and um, they are solid. Where are you made? Shoes. They were made in China, as most things are. Uh, pasting the keywords from earlier, I will give you this information later. We're gonna say $60 on these. Hopefully they sell right now because you know, people are going on vacation, they're hiking, they're doing all that good stuff. So hopefully they'll sell quickly. Okay, we have very little battery left on this computer. So we're going to try to get through the last two as quickly as possible. So these fry boots, I love. Let's see if there's a style name. Cog? Like, do you think that's the style name? Or 347? I'm looking right here at what I believe is a style number. Or it could be here. Actually, I think this is it. Let's try it that way one time. 801-0275. Fry images. <laughs> so I'm seeing a lot of like the inside of the boots and this is not it. Okay, those are a good try though. Let's try this one i don't think this will be it either no okay so forget that let's go back to the reason why i thought maybe that was the um style number is because it has like f18 which i feel like is fall of 18. let's try this really quickly just to see three four seven thirteen forty five three four seven thirteen forty five fry i don't believe that that's it Right? What does our shoe look like? Our shoe, oh, maybe. Let me pull up that one. Oh, I think it is. I think it's this guy right here. Yeah, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this information. I will have to change the size. This person has theirs listed for $69.99, which is great news, but what we'll do is we're going to put that into my listing here. I'm going to move this stuff around. Um, women's size six and a half, I believe. Is that what mine were? Six and a half M. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this part of the listing title and paste it. I'm going to get rid of pointed toe because I feel like when you use too many keywords in your search, you oftentimes eliminate um, the amount of hits that you'll get. So if you go a little bit more broad, I think that's what's going to help me find a lot more hits. So comps are all over the place. And when I say comps, I mean listed comps. So you've got some that are brand new as cheap as $77. You've got used ones for $120. I'm seeing 48, 89, 108. So lots of different sizes. Also, I don't feel like mine is in the color cognac. So I'm going to change that because, yeah, I don't think so. But let's look at these. Okay. So, yeah, 
anywhere like a little bit above or a little bit below a hundred dollars i feel like is what i'm seeing but what is important is seeing how much these have recently sold for these sold for 59 46 65 57 okay 90 so this makes it really hard however if you remember mine were worn oh mine had some wear yeah these ones i remember they had some scuffs kind of off um, behind the boot and whatnot. This is why it's really important too, to take good pictures, to remind yourself of the condition of items when you are revisiting a listing later on. Let's go ahead and list mine. I wanna say for like 75 or $80, because I think in doing so, we're going to stay competitive, but also not undersell ourselves by too much. Maybe 75 is too low. Let's do like 80, let's do, $80. These look so nice. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with these? I mean, these aren't even in the same size as mine. So also, man, oh, they have kind of this wrinkled leather look here. Um, there's some cognac for these as are they, as are they. Okay. So maybe that is the right color. It just kind of depends on the lighting. Okay. We're going to go with $80. I don't want to spend too much time going back and forth on pricing. So let's put 80 Let's put 80 here and let's build out the rest of this listing. So fry, Jennifer pointed toe, cognac, leather. I don't even know if I'm saying cognac, cognac. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, leather, ankle boots, women's size six and a half. Um, it has a side zip, correct? Yeah. So I think I'm going to say leather side zip ankle boots and that is enough information. These cognac leather ankle boots from Fry are the popular Jennifer style with a pointed toe. There is some wear on the back of the boots as shown in the pictures, some scratches and scuffs. And then I put that shoes keyword thing, but I'm gonna say they are in otherwise good use condition. And I'm gonna get rid of this business here. Measurements are shown. Okay, so we're going to say leather, classic. I feel like I can use the word western or maybe I'll say neutral. I think they're a good neutral color shoe. The brand is Fry. They are tan. They are leather. They are a six and a half. They are for women. They are pre-owned. They're in good condition. They're not perfect, but they are solid. They are made in... Vietnam. And in a second, I'm going to have to take you upstairs because, well, actually, let's just see. Let's see if we can get through this last listing together before my computer dies. If not, it's okay. You've seen me list four pairs of shoes now, and that should be plenty. But the last one is this pair of Schutz shoes. Let's see if there's a style name. I feel like sometimes they have it. These do not. These are in a seven and a half B. I'm going to write that down here. Let's see if we can find the style using Google Lens quickly. So, okay, here we go. These are the Schutz Lou Black Croc Embossed Slip on Point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy all that. This site is selling them for $82.80. I don't really know what this site is, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to paste this into here. I'm going to have to get rid of some of these words. I don't need fashion pumps. The little heels. Perfect. Okay. But what I might use from here is this information that they have in their description. I'm going to put that in my listing as description because someone else already did the work. These are basically brand new as well. So now I'm just going to write shoes. They are new without the box with no holes of your stains okay and then i'm gonna write classic croc leather copy those okay we still have to find the price of these let me go ahead and paste my keywords here since i already copied them and i'm going to look in poshmark i'm gonna get rid of a lot of the keywords Let's just say croc. Okay, let's see what happens when I look these guys up. See, so there are not 
really any listed right now. Let's see if any have sold. This is the same shoe, but not with like the Croc Emboss. These sold for 50. These are in a Nubuck leather. They sold for, or no, they're listed for 115. Okay, let's go to solds. So if mine is the only one with like this Croc embossed leather, um, I think I can price it a little bit higher. Okay, so these sold for 40. I think I can sell mine for 50. Let's go ahead and list mine for 50. I think that sounds fair. Going as fast as we can. We're going as fast as we can. Cause we don't have a lot of time. New without the bucks. Solid. Or I guess I can say Croc. I'm just gonna do this. Okay. Um, I think they were made in Brazil, but I don't remember. Brazil. Yes. We're gonna list them for 50. Done. Okay, so the next step is I'm gonna show you how I push all of these listings out now using List Perfectly onto the different reselling platforms that I uh, list on. However, in order to do that, I need to take this computer upstairs and charge it. So let's go to my room. All right, so now that all of the listings are inside of List Perfectly, all we have to do is push them out to the different reselling platforms that we want them listed on. I want to preface this portion by saying I use the pro plan version of List Perfectly, which means I have all of the bells and whistles. And I don't really remember at times like what things Things I get because I'm on pro and what things you know everyone gets but one thing I can say for certain is with list perfectly it doesn't matter what plan you're on everyone gets an unlimited number of listings which is amazing I know there are some cross posting softwares out there where like you pay kind of like buy the hundred or buy like 10 or I don't really know how it works but with list perfectly even with their basic plan you can cross post as many listings as you want to as many platforms as you want. And as you're about to see, they offer so many platforms. If it sounds like this is an advertisement for List Perfectly, it's not in the sense of like, they're not paying me to make this video, but I do absolutely love List Perfectly. I love the product. I love the people behind the product. They are amazing. If you want to try out List Perfectly yourself, um, I do have a coupon code that you can use. It's Becky Park, and it'll save you 30% off of your first month of List Perfectly. I just think it's a no brainer to at least least try it, even if it is at the basic level, because you do get a free trial period just to make sure that it's something that, you know, works well within your business model before you commit to paying a certain amount per month. Um, but I'll try to kind of call out what things are specific to the pro plan, what things everyone gets. I know some of the listing like formatting that you're about to see here is specific to the pro plan, if I'm not mistaken, but a lot of this, everyone has the opportunity to do with whatever plan they have. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how I cross list to a bunch of different platforms. What I do is I bulk cross list, which means instead of doing one at a time, I do typically up to five at a time. I've done as many as 10, but what I'm doing is I'm selecting the five listings that I want to go ahead and get listed to all of the various platforms that I sell on. Up here, they are going to show up as different tabs. So there's going to be about 25 different tabs up here because there's going to be five tabs per listing because there are about five platforms that I'm going to list these items to. I think that in order to be able to bulk cross list, you have to be on the plan above basic and then anything above that is fine. I feel like you cannot do this bulk cross listing that I'm about to do on the basic plan. I could be mistaken. I will correct myself if I am. But up here, you can see now all of the listings starting to open up. This first one was on Mercari. You see a Poshmark one, you see eBay, you see Facebook, and then you're gonna see Depop and you're gonna see Kitizen. So actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. We are going to be cross-listing sometimes to six different platforms. Some of these platforms, I will not put you know some of these shoes on just because that platform, it just doesn't make sense to put that listing on but um most of these listings are going to go on most of the different platforms so let's start with what opened up first which is these shoots shits i don't know these are the lou black croc emboss slip on pointed toes to little heels um you can see the pictures carried over from list perfectly into mercari they look beautiful they look perfect i've got the title that carried over i've got the description and in the description you can see this is all of the stuff that i put some of this was copied and pasted from that one site but here are my three keywords here are the features that i had selected here is the size here's the condition 
section and they really just make it look so nice um, because of the way that they format it. I feel like I remember Clara, the one of the CEOs of List Perfectly saying that they um, modeled this after how listings look on Nordstrom's, like on Nordstrom site. So I think it's just very classy looking, very easy on the eye. Um, so that's how the description looks. The tags carried over here into the optional tag section of the Mercari listing. Um, already it carried over the category, it's women, it's shoes, it's heels. The brand carried over. The heel height is three to four inches and it is a stiletto heel. It is made of leather. We're saying it's like new, size seven and a half. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check this. So if you notice here on Mercari, it automatically thought that these shoes weighed between one and two pounds. And so it's making the buyer pay $12.30 for shipping. However, when I went and weighed this, it was not two pounds. And then they went in and like changed that on their own. It was at 15 ounces. So um, if I put in 15 and I select the carrier, you'll notice that I can get these to ship for a lot cheaper than the default setting that Mercari had it shipping for. So that is something that I always take a moment to check on Mercari just so I'm not accidentally overcharging the buyer, especially because they have to pay so much to get it shipped to them now um, with Mercari. And I do have the buyer pay for shipping. I don't like to eat into my profits like that. So we are setting this at $50. I'm going to go ahead and keep the smart pricing on, but I'm only going to allow the price to drop on Mercari to 45. But that way the listing stays fresh. It continues to like, you know, get fresh eyes on it when the price drops and alert people who have liked the item when the price drops as well. This one's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and list. You can see all of the listings up here though. Um, so the next one is Poshmark. So all the pictures carried over, they look great. The title, the description, you can see the formatting of the description a little bit better here on Poshmark. The category is women. These are shoes. These are heels. The size carried over. It's not new with tags. So I'm going to say no to that because there are no tags to be seen. Um, classic crock and leather style tags, they carried over. I'm going to put zero as the original price. That's just a choice that I make. I don't want to take the time to find the actual price of something. Yeah, so this one's ready to go. Oh, and look at that. We are listing these during the best in shoes posh party. I don't think that that actually means anything. I don't think it's going to help these shoes sell any faster, but we're just going to see what happens. Um, item condition for these. This is something that pops up right away on eBay just so that they can start to put this listing together. So yes, I'm going to say new without the box. Same thing. My picture is carried over. The title is there. Um, my SKU is there. If you guys remember, I put these shoes in bin H. Um, all of this kind of carried over. I'm going to probably, yeah, I'm going to select pump for the style of shoe. So the thing about eBay that is very different when it comes to listing compared to Poshmark and Mercari is that they just want so much more information about everything. And I've gotten better and faster at it. But yes, it does slow me down because they want more and it's going to take more time. So all of these are the required item specific. So once you fill this stuff in, you don't have to do any of this if you don't want. And I know resellers who don't, they just skip over this section because they're like, I don't need to do it. Um, I like to do it if I know the information, you know, quickly and easily. So this one, for example, I was trying to see if I could find the UK or um, European sizing. I don't see it. So I'm going to leave those blank theme. If they have classic or modern, I'm not seeing classic. Um, if they have office, that would be a good one. Nope. They didn't have modern, right? Okay. I think I'm just going to have to leave these. I think I'm just going to have to leave this one blank. Do they have minimal? No. I don't know. Some of these, like, I just hate these uh, item specifics. Okay. Point to toe, yes. Heel height, 3 to 3.9 inches, yes. Solid, yes. Slip on closure, yes. I don't know that one. Features. They are lined. They have like an inner lining. I think that's it though. Okay. Yeah, none of those other features apply. The model. These were the Schutz Lou. I could like see, they don't have it, but I'll just go ahead and put it in myself. It's not really going to do much. Um, I'm not going to put any of this information just because I don't know it off the top of my head. I'm going to put business, formal, party cocktail, wedding. I think you could wear this to all those places. 
These were made in Brazil, which, okay, I was looking in the wrong thing. Season, I'm going to select all the seasons. I don't think it matters when these are worn. I'm going to leave those blank. Okay, so on eBay, I like to make things end in 99. So instead of selling it for $50, I'm going to sell it for $49.99. Also over here, they're gonna tell you just kind of some analytics regarding this particular pair of shoes. They're saying, hey, this shoe has sold for a median price in the last 90 days of $30. So that means there were shoes that sold for like 40, 50, but there were also shoes of this similar, similar style that sold for 20 or 10. Um, and 30 is kind of the median. I'm gonna keep this price. And then they're saying that 33% of the sales in the last 90 days of this particular shoe had free shipping on them. I'm not doing free shipping. I don't do that. So um, package weight again was 15 ounces. This can go first class, but I'm going to charge $7 for it to go first class. Um, this is all correct. Listing ad rate. I'm going to go ahead and promote this at 3%. That's just what I've been doing my promoted listings at lately. And then I am going to require immediate payment when the buyer uses by now. List it. Let's go. And then on Facebook, women's heels, they are new. They're like new. These are in a size seven and a half. I got to move my face over. The shoe style, pumps. Oh, that looks good. Facebook is really fast to list to as well. So even though I make basically a sale every two months over there, I just take like the eight seconds that it takes to list over here because why not? It doesn't really take me any time. Um, here you have to select like how much it weighs. That's why I like to pre-weigh everything before I even list it. Um, I do not typically list things in Facebook groups just because I don't know. Now, Depop is a platform that is very popular with like Gen Z. Um, it's a lot more of like the trendy stuff, which this is not. This is very classic. It's definitely, I think, more of like a modern woman shoe. I'm not going to take the time to list it here because I just don't anticipate it selling there. Um, this is Kitizen. It probably won't sell here either, but literally it takes like four seconds to list onto Kitizen. So I am just going to go ahead and get this listed over here. Um, Depop, it does take a bit longer. Now on, what is this called? On Kitizen, I do offer free shipping, but what I do is I build the cost of shipping into the price. So instead of selling this for $50, I'm selling it for $57.95. Also, I don't know why I do this. This is so extra, but instead of ending things in 99 cents or a flat dollar amount on Kitizen, I end it in 95. I also do that on my own website. Why do I do that? I don't know because I'm weird. So what you will notice is when something is properly listed and you know there's no errors or anything like that, List Perfectly is going to have this little pop-up show up saying, yes, it's been successfully added. Um, and then you'll see that here on Poshmark as well. I'm going to go ahead and um, exit out of these tabs. I want to see if, ooh, someone wants to buy something. Okay, hold on. Let me deal with this really quickly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get out of that. This did list properly to eBay. It listed properly to, what is this called? Facebook, to Kitizen. And now we're on our next pair of shoes. This is the Fry Boots. Um, I'm going to try to go a little bit faster now that we walked through all of those platforms together. So this one, um, you can see the category carried over. The shaft height, we're going to select ankle because this is an ankle boot. End use, I would say this is every day. And the heel height, good thing I took a picture. This is between two and three inches. So we're going to say medium, two to three inches. And this is made of leather. They're in good condition. Now this one, they have up to three pounds and it's $12.30. However, if I look, when I weighed this, it weighed one pound, six ounces. So I'm going to select carrier and I'm going to go ahead and use this FedEx ground economy. I know some people hate shipping this way. I have not really had problems with it. I had one problem, one pair of pretty expensive shoes got lost in the mail. I think it was a pair of Teva like hiking boots and that was extremely frustrating. But other than that, everything has gotten where it's supposed to go. I actually put my, um, I actually put packages that are through FedEx Ground Economy 
out with my USPS packages and I have had no issues with that. So I do porch pickup and um, my mail carrier will come to my house, pick up my bag of packages off of my porch and scan everything in their truck. And I've not had any issues with them doing that for my FedEx packages, because actually there are two barcodes. One on top is for FedEx and the one on the bottom is for USPS. So as long as it has that USPS barcode, um, I put it out with my USPS packages and I have no issues. So we're listing this for 80. I am going to go ahead and turn this on the smart pricing and I will let the price of these boots drop to 65 um a little bit each day till they get there so i'm gonna go ahead and list poshmark women i don't know why the category never transfers over on poshmark but it's not a big deal um these are ankle boots six and a half fry tan do you see how little work i have to do because the list perfectly already transferred all of this information over it just makes it so much easier these are pre-owned these are booties. All that is done. Um, this one, I bet they have some other shoe sizes. Let's see. They do not. Okay, that's fine. I thought they might have like the European or UK size. So oftentimes this is so funny. When you are listing things um, like boots, they'll say, oh, this is like the character boots from Dora the Explorer. No, it's not. They're just a pair of boots. Um, theme. I would say Bohemia, right? Like a little bit of a stretch, but I think so. If they had classic, I would do that, but I think that's good enough. Okay, heel style. It's like a block. Cone? Would you say cone or block? Let's see. Uh, let's call it a cone. I think that's more of a cone. Um, the occasion. I'm going to say casual. I think that works. Pointed toe? Yeah, that's a pointed toe. You could also say almond toe, but it's like pretty point. Eh, maybe all. Eh. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it at pointed. Like I, I think you could go with almond as well, but pointed is fine. Um, actually, let's go with almond. Heel height we know is mid. Pattern is solid. Features. This is lined, and that's all we're gonna put there. It is not vintage. It has a side zip. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select all of the seasons, even though personally I probably wouldn't wear it in the winter or in the summer. Now, because I put this information in list perfectly, I have things like, you know, where it was made. If I had care information like, you know, hand wash or whatever, that information would be here as well. So that way I don't have to open up these pictures to see where this was made. Um, all I had to do was scroll down a little bit. These were made in Vietnam. So now I can go here and uh, type in Vietnam. And then we're good. So I'm going to change the price of these. We'll just keep it consistent throughout on all the platforms. So $79.99, again, they're saying 8% of buyers offered free shipping on this similar shoe. And the median price is 50 So mine is definitely higher. We're going to see, though, how I do with that. I am going to go ahead and um, try to ship these out. They're a little bit bigger. I don't know if I can get them in a padded flat rate envelope. So I think what I'll do is priority mail and I'm gonna charge $9 for shipping because I think that they'll have to go in some sort of a box. And I'm gonna do $3 for my ad rate. Yes, I want them to pay for the item immediately if they use buy it now. And then I'm going to go ahead and list it. A couple other things that I want to draw your attention to. Let me see where it is. So there is a section where they say, do you want to, okay, right here. Do you want to accept offers? I do not accept offers when I first list an item. Once it's been listed for 30 days and it's about to automatically renew or relist, at that point, I will turn on the ability for buyers to send offers. But when it's first listed, I just want it to sell at the price that I have it listed for based off of the um, based off of the research that I did. So honestly, for that reason, I am going to go ahead and just drop the price of these to $74.99 because $80 was kind of based on Poshmark and based on people sending me offers. So I'll go ahead and start this a little bit lower. But then also the last thing I wanted to show you is shipping. So if you look at shipping, you have so many different options. Um, so right here, 
this is like your shipping method. There's standard shipping, freight shipping, local pickup. Um, standard shipping is what probably 99% of eBay listings um, utilize because it's smaller or medium sized pieces. However, if you're trying to ship something like a couch or I don't know, like a tool thing, like a big tool chest or something, those you're gonna have to ship using freight shipping. You can't try to get USPS or UPS to ship a couch for you. Like that's just not gonna work the way that you think it will. Um, the other option is a local pickup. So if it's something like a car or something like big furniture, like a desk or something, um, you can actually utilize eBay to do local pickup. I feel like that is definitely a lot more um, successful in larger cities. I feel like I wouldn't make any sales that way if I did local pickup in my town, but who knows? Um, this is where you put the information regarding the weight and the dimensions. I don't put in the package dimensions ahead of time because it doesn't really matter that much. Now, if you're getting into really big boxes, then yes, that's going to change the shipping price because shipping price is determined by weight and size of the package. For me, because the majority of what I'm shipping out are clothing, shoes, and accessories, they're all kind of around the same size. And so I know roughly how much it's going to cost. However, if I'm looking at like really big knee high boots or like a huge winter jacket that has to go on like a big, huge box, I know to kind of add a few dollars to how much the shipping is going to be because it's going to go in a bigger package, which brings me to this. So when you look at domestic shipping and you go to cost type, there are two different ways to figure out how much something is going to cost when it comes to shipping. I always do flat rate shipping, which means it's going to be the same cost regardless of where the buyer lives. And the reason why I'm comfortable charging everyone a flat shipping rate is because I live in Illinois, which is the center of the United States. So oftentimes things are selling to other people in the Midwest, but even if they sell to the East or West Coast, because I'm in the middle, it doesn't add that much mileage. My package isn't traveling that much farther. And so if I charge charge someone $5 for shipping because of the fact that it weighs, let's say eight ounces, um, that, that shipping cost is going to be pretty close to $5, regardless of where someone lives. Now, if they live in like Puerto Rico or Alaska or something, it's probably going to go up a little bit, but those buyers are pretty rare. And so I'm okay with charging $5 to everyone, regardless of where they live. However, if I lived in like you know, California, or if I lived in Maine or something like that, like on different sides of the country, I would definitely use calculated shipping. This means that the cost varies based on buyer location. So they will factor in for the buyer, hey, you live in Maine and I live in California. So I'm going to charge you more for shipping than if you were to live in Nevada. Um, that's something that eBay will figure out for you. I don't do that because I do generally feel like they tend to overcharge buyers when you use calculated shipping. So I just go with flat rate and I have not really gotten burned by doing that. So all of that being said, I'm saying no matter where you live, no matter how far away from me you are, you're going to pay me $9 for me to ship these boots to you. Okay. So, um, we already figured all that out. So I'm going to go ahead and list that. All right. Moving on to Facebook. These are boots. These are in good condition. These are in a six and a half. They are, they don't have tan as an option. I'm going to say they're more brown than they are beige. I don't know what I would call these. I feel like I could call them booties. So on Facebook Marketplace, when things get to be over a pound, oops. You have two options, UPS or USPS. Honestly, out of just pure convenience, I always choose USPS because then I can just put it outside with my other packages. I don't have to worry about going to a UPS location. Now, I do not allow offers on Facebook because it doesn't matter. People will just message you anyway, being like, is this available? And at that time, if they want a lower price, they'll tell you. Allowing offers means absolutely nothing because if they send you an offer and you accept, they don't have to pay for it at that moment. They don't even have to commit to buying it. It's just you saying, yeah, I'd be willing to sell it to you for that price. And then chances are they may not even actually go ahead and purchase it. So right now I'm going back to my eBay listing and I'm copying the listing title and you'll see why in a second. I am going to go ahead and list these on Depop. Depop does not have a listing title. They will show what 
your description says. And so I copy the listing title from somewhere else and then I paste it into the beginning of the description. So here's my listing title, the rest of my description. Depop is kind of annoying to list to. I'm not going to lie. That's why like I only list the things that make sense to list on Depop. And these kind of do. I feel like I actually may have sold a pair of fry boots online before. So you can choose three occasions. I'm going to say casual festival and I don't know, school. <laughs> you think school makes sense? They're made of leather, fry, good. These are a size six and a half. They're tan. They are pre loved. They are modern. Yeah, you could say boho. You could say western. And then there's like a casual option that I tend to go with. So casual. Um, okay. So yes, I will offer worldwide shipping and I'm going to just put a random super expensive price on that because it is expensive to ship worldwide and I've never had a worldwide sale. Maybe it's because I price too high. I don't know. Um, also on Depop, I do free shipping because that's kind of the culture of Depop. So I just build the cost of shipping into my listing. So I'm going to say that these are $88. Um, on Depop, people do have the option to send you offers. So if I price a little high, it's fine because people will send me offers and then I just decide if I want to accept them or not. Okay, so same here. We're going to go ahead and build the price of shipping into the price on Kitizen. So we're just going to check and make sure that everything has listed okay. I'm going to see if anyone has liked the other pieces. Okay. That one is good. I think someone accepted my offer. Huzzah! Someone bought something for me. Um, eBay is good to go. Facebook is good to go. Depop is good to go. Kitizen is good to go. We've got three more to go. Echo. So these are not men's. They are women's and they are shoes. They are athletic shoes. They are made of leather. Nope, not faux leather. They're real. Okay. They are for, so they don't have hiking, so I'm just gonna put every day. They are a low top, they are like new. They are in a size 10. So the default was to charge the buyer $12.30 for shipping here using UPS ground. They weigh a pound and 10 ounces. I can get these to ship for 9.50. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll let the price of these go down to $50 using Mercari Smart Pricing. That one's done. Poshmark Women. These are shoes. These are athletic shoes. Size 10, gray, zero. Dunzo. Oh, best in shoes. Yes. Um, eBay. New without the box. Does this have European size 41, UK 7.5, so 41, 7.5, and 41. They should have outdoor as a theme. Yep. Features, comfort, breathable that is literally what gore-tex means and gore-tex also means waterproof okay mm. so we're going to choose hiking what are these 41 so the release year, I'm like 99% sure. Oh no, it wasn't these. It was something else. Okay. These are solid. They lace up. These were made in China. They are casual active wear season. You can wear them in any season. Um, okay, we're going to price these at $59.99. Look at this. So here it's saying the median sold price is $79.25. I'm not going to change my price 
to be higher to reflect that, but hopefully that means that these sell a little bit faster. These being a size 10, they are not gonna fit in a padded flat rate envelope. I feel like anything above a women's size eight generally will not fit in a padded flat rate envelope, especially like sneakers or boots or things of that nature. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this priority mail and I'm gonna charge $9 for shipping. Um, promoted at 3%. Dunzos. And maybe what we'll do with the next listing is I'm going to just list as quickly as I can. I'm not going to talk you through it, but I'm going to time myself so I can show you how long does it take me to get a listing cross listed to six different platforms. I think that'll be kind of eye opening and cool to see. Um, and maybe you can compare it to how long would it take you to cross list an item to six different platforms without something like List Perfectly. And that can kind of show you like just how beneficial something like List Perfectly is. I'm not going to put these on Depop. It's just not the right platform for them. Um, these are athletic shoes. New without the tag. Okay. Okay. So let's double check. Mercari is good. Poshmark is good. eBay is good. Facebook Marketplace is good. Kid is in takes forever, but it will be good. I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to time myself listing these Stuart Weitzman shoes over to all six platforms. And I will go ahead and list them onto Depop as well. So let me get my phone. Okay. So let's turn the stopwatch on. Here we go. It took me 36 seconds and that was kind of long. I got stuck on a couple of things. Poshmark took me about 20 seconds. So getting those Stuart Weitzman sandals, heels, whatever listed to six different platforms took me four minutes and 21 seconds. I did get tripped up a little bit because the material, like there is leather used, but also like the upper is not really leather, but I don't know what it is because on a lot of shoes, they don't tell you the exact material. It's like a stretchy, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. So that's what got me stuck a little bit. Okay. Mercari, this is a great example of how a lot of times you press list, but then you come back to it and it hasn't actually listed. So usually I press list like eight times on Mercari, but it's good to go now. Poshmark is good to go. eBay is good to go. Facebook marketplace is good to go. Depop is good to go. Kitizen is good to go. Yay. So now we have one last pair of shul shoes. I saw mule. So I said shoes. Shoes to do. We'll do these together as well. And then I've got five listings up for the day. I typically do five listings a day. In the summer, I'm trying to do more since I don't have my regular job to go to. Typically, I work as a high school choir teacher and I'm not doing that over the summer. And so I have a little bit more time. I'm trying to do at least 10 listings a day. Some days since summer break has started, I've done a really good job of that. Sometimes I miss the mark by a little bit. Sometimes I get like five or seven up, but I do feel like despite the fact that a lot of people are complaining about summer slowdown, I am experiencing decent success with sales. And I think it's because I'm not doing the same amount that I was before, but I'm actually doing a little bit more. So 
you know, that's not an option that is readily available to everyone I know. Um, so I can't just be like, oh, if your sales are down, just go ahead and do more. Like some of you are already doing the most that you can. Um, but okay, I don't know that you can say business. I think you could say travel. Um, it's been working for me. It's been at least keeping my sales somewhat consistent and actually maybe giving me more sales than normal, but that's because I'm putting more time into my reselling business. So that would kind of make sense, right? Okay. These are a European size 39. So let me know down in the comments, although you'll see here in just a little bit, like kind of at the end of the video, after I'm done listing all of these shoes, you're going to be able to see which ones sold within a month and how much they sold for. But before I get to that part of the video, let me know down in the comments below, which shoes do you think are going to sell? first out of all of the ones that I listed. And like I shared when I was doing the haul, I feel like this shows just a wide range of trends and styles when it comes to shoes. There are shoes for like a younger clientele or more of like a, uh, you know, maybe like 20s, 30s and 40s. Um, and there are shoes for like older women. I don't know. There's a big variety. So that definitely plays into it a little bit, but also just, you know, which which shoes were priced well, which shoes are more desirable. There's a lot that kind of goes into it. So I'm curious to see which ones you think are going to sell the fastest. If I had to guess, I don't even remember like what all I listed. If I had to guess, I would guess either these Reekers actually, or the Echo shoes. Even though Echo doesn't do very well for me, I would guess Echo because um, of the Gore-Tex because they're in great shape and because this is the season when a lot of people are hiking, they are going out to be in nature and they need those kinds of shoes now. So if I had to guess, I would guess um, those two. Yeah, as you notice, I did not list these on Depop because I don't think that they really appeal to the Depop clientele. So these are listed the next part of the video. As things sell, I will show you how I ship the items out. Um, you know, it's different depending on which platform the item sells on, but I'll show you how I ship things and we'll kind of do like a final, where are they now? Where are the shoes now that they've been listed? Um, did they sell? And if not, why not? So that is it for this portion. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully things sell really soon. I sold those Echo shoes um, with Gore-Tex and Yak leather. So we're gonna go ahead and get them out. They were in bin letter H. Let's see if I can do this with the one hand. I mean, they're right on top because we just put them away. So they sold as part of my like, I think I was running like a 40% off sale on eBay. So definitely not as much profit as I would have liked. Let's see. They sold for $34.90. So I'll put right here how much profit that comes out to. Um, definitely less than I would have liked. I probably could have held out and made more, but I mean, you know, I was putting everything on sale. So that's what you get. You move some lower price items, but you also move some of the newest pieces that you just listed. That's just kind of how it works. Let's get them shipped up. All right, so these shoes are going to New York. So ideally, if I can get them to ship out in a padded flat rate envelope, that's gonna save me the most money and just kind of be the most cost efficient. However, I think they're too big to fit in here. Like, it looks like they'll fit, but because these are thicker up on top, let's just try before we even put them in a plastic bag, but I don't know. I don't know if it'll work. Let's see. Yeah. It's not going to work. So we're going to have to put these in a box, like a different box, just a box that I reuse. Um, or, I mean, I could even put them in one of those USPS shoe boxes. But the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put them in one of these little baggies. I actually might have to use the bigger bag for this, too, because... Typically, if it fits in this bag, it fits in a padded flat rate envelope, and it did not. So let me go with the bigger one. I did charge, I believe, $10 for shipping, so I definitely made sure to account for the fact that this probably would not fit in a padded flat rate envelope. 
and then also to cover you know little like shipping supplies and things like that things like these little plastic bags um, the shipping label all that kind of stuff so they go pretty nicely in this bag just like that and then the next thing we're going to do is just look for a box but to be honest with you i think i'm just going to go ahead and use a Prior, uh, yeah, a Priority Mail shoe box from USPS. This is what they look like. This is the shoe box, and it says it right there on the box itself. The dimensions are 7 by 5 by 14. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to ship out these shoes. I'm going to go ahead and tape this box up, and I will use my eBay tape for that, and then I'll let you know how much it came out to. Oh, so I don't really have, like, those... Um, big bubble things, the air filled bubbles, I don't remember what they're called, but I do have some craft paper or like packing paper, so I'm just going to put that at the bottom and at the top to cushion the shoes a little bit. I've just been saving these from like, you know, when we've gotten furniture shipped to us or just from a lot of different places. Hi, your hair looks so cute. You look like such a little 90s girl with your hair and your outfit. Did Uncle like it? Huh? Yeah. And you're, and you're, the dentist. Yeah. She said that my hair was so pretty. Oh, that's nice. All right, so we're going to go ahead and weigh this. It's two pounds. Okay. So we're going to put two pounds. I'm going to, oh, I got to put in the dimensions. The dimensions, like I told you just a second ago, were seven by five by 14. And so that comes out actually, wow. It's like so much cheaper to ship it like this than it were to be through the padded flat rate envelope. It's only coming out to $7.20. My goodness. Okay, so, well, there we go. That was pretty awesome. I was like upset about the fact that they weren't going to fit in a padded flat rate envelope, but this actually turned out to be much better. So I'm printing the label right now. You'll see my Dymo printing the label. And then we're going to go ahead and stick that on the box and we're good to go. now just to add it to the bag of things that I have outside for the post worker. I'm kind of a mess right now. I just got back from Michigan, but these shoots, shoots, shoes did sell. So um, I'm going to show you really quickly what I'm going to do to package them up. So they sold, okay, it helps if you take off the little thing here, but they sold on Poshmark. So shipping's super easy. I'm just going to put them in this nice little plastic bag. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put those in a padded uh, flat rate mailer because they'll get some nice extra protection from the padding. And, you know, I can use this on Poshmark because you can use flat rate uh, shipping supplies from USPS. So the last thing I'm gonna do is fill out my thank you card. This is going to Kelly. So I just write, Dear Kelly, thank you. Now, the sad thing is, not really sad, but um, these sold for $42. That was an offer that I had sent out on Poshmark. If you remember, I had them listed for $50. I was getting a lot of like $25, $35 offers, but they did sell on Poshmark. That was also with discounted shipping. And so I only made a profit of, let's see, I wrote it down, $18.59, which isn't awful, but you know, it's not quite as much as I was hoping for, but it did sell for a decent amount. So all I have to do now is find Kelly's shipping label, slap it on there, and then I can throw it in my bag. All right, so I had said I wanted to kind of give you an update on everything a month later. I sourced these shoes on June 1st. I'm looking at the video footage on my phone right now from when I went thrifting. So I got these on June 1st and today is July 26th. So we're actually about two months out and here is the recap. I showed you five pairs of shoes, 
The Rieger shoes sold, and I didn't get to show you me shipping them because I think that day was a crazy day and I just had to hurry up and get them shipped. But those sold on eBay on June 18th, I believe, for $39.99, which was my full asking price. Um, I had to pay $8.30 to ship those out. I shipped them out in a padded flat rate envelope. I had, again, $9.99 into those. And so I made a net profit on those shoes of $21.86. And those took about three weeks to sell, which wasn't bad. The Echo shoes also sold, and they sold for $34.90. That was an offer that I had sent out to watchers. I think I was running some kind of sale and I don't remember the exact story on those or like why I let them go for so little because I think I had originally listed them for $50, but for whatever reason, I sent out a $35 offer. Actually, I wanted to list them for 60. So I don't know what happened there, but I was able to ship them out for $7.20. I still made a profit of $22.48 on those and those sold 11 days after being listed or maybe like 10 days after being listed. These shoots, shits, those heels, I have gotten probably like four to five offers on, but for so little. I'm gonna hold out for at least a $40 offer on those. So nope, those have not sold yet, but they have gotten a ton of interest. Unlike these Stuart Weitzman heels that nobody wants. I don't even know if anyone's looked at them. Like, I don't know that they've been liked by a single person. I don't think they've ever been watched. Nobody cares that these shoes are listed. Nobody wants them. And the same is kind of true of the fry boots that I got. These fry boots I thought were amazing. Maybe they're just priced too high. I don't know, but I don't really ever remember anyone liking them or watching them. There's just not a lot of activity surrounding these fry boots either. Probably what I will do in about a week or two is I'll go ahead and relist these on all of my platforms because I also think this is a little bit harder of a sell in the summer. You know, I listed these at the beginning of June. At that time, people are still heavily purchasing summer items because it's kind of the beginning of the summer. But now that it's end of July, early August, people are definitely starting to think about the fall. And this is a perfect little fall booty. So I think that the smart thing to do here is to go ahead and list these, but I don't know what to do about those Stuart Weitzman's. Like there's, there's no hope for them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video from me. I don't do these kinds of videos where I chronicle like a long period of time in one video, but if you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then definitely let me know by hitting that thumbs up sign. And you can also like write a comment in the comment section and be like, I like this, do it again. However you want to let me know, let me know, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.